when you're doing experiments that affect the performance of your rocket, like changing the amount of water, fin size or nose cone shapes for example, you need to be able to measure that performance difference to see whether the changes made things better or worse. In an ideal world, you would fly your rocket, measure the altitude say, and make the change and fly it again to compare the new altitude. The problem in the real world, however, is that there are errors in measurement due to the instrumentation used and variability in each flight, such as launch pressure differences and environmental conditions that will affect your results. Having an understanding of the magnitude of this variability is important in order to extract useful results from your experiments. This week we look at the variability for a typical rocket launch multiple times under exactly the same conditions. We fitted four Altimeter 1 barometric altimeters to the rocket to give us an indication of how consistent the readings are between the different altimeters on the same flight. For each launch we measured the water amount on a scale to try to remove the variability due to differing water amounts in the rocket. For the first flight we set the adjustable pressure regulator to 120 psi and for subsequent launches we used exactly the same setting. We launched the rocket five times with this configuration and then compared the results. We also flew exactly the same rocket two more times with added foam but having the same total volume. Here is a graph of the ultimate measurements. You can see that the altimeter ones are pretty consistent and all the readings were within less than 2% of each other. We then averaged the altitude from the four altimeters for each flight and compared the altitudes on successive flights. The difference in altitude between individual flights is more significant and when we look at the averaged altitude on each flight we see that they are within 12% of each other. The first flight was out considerably, so looking at flights 2 to 5, the difference was only about 4.5% between them. For flight 6 and 7 with foam, the difference was about 7%. The variation here is due to a number of factors such as crosswind, temperature, thermals, and some pressure differences as well. Lastly, we also compared the flight durations of these flights, as sometimes people use flight duration to compare performance. From the results, you can see that the variability is as much as 29%, which is a significant error. So what can we learn from these results? When the expected changes in performance are small, the results could be completely swamped by the errors in the measurements. You may need to launch the rocket a significant number of times and average the results in order to reach useful conclusions about small performance changes. So before you do your experiments, first fly your rocket a number of times under the same conditions to establish the variability in your measurements. This way, you should be able to better design the rest of your experiment so you can reach meaningful conclusions.